wanted to kind of, there's a parallel thing here, which Bjork is a phenomenal example of. I love what your example with Arca, but I think maybe in a way, having now listened through to your stems and really thinking a lot more about like the way that you're making music, um, there's kind of, I think this idea of being like open to chaos, basically, like you're not in control of everything. Um, and I don't know if you saw this, I was mentioning before you came on that your stems were some of the most interesting I've seen because I was like, oh, this track is like really big and beautiful and huge. And I was expecting like, brrrp, like a big thing of stems. And it was like, <laughs> there's like <laughs> five tracks or something like that. But it's like, oh, wow. Like just what you're doing on like, you're able to take one idea and really like let it go somewhere. Um, so we're, we're, we've had some amazing questions in the chat, actually, which we'll come back to everyone. Um, but we're kind of going to just start to lean over and touch on some technology a little bit more. Um, so you're, you're obviously like very deliberate about your choices in the studio, Matt, and I'm just wondering how you kind of um, keep that chaotic or unpredictable or almost like collaborative with your equipment element active when you're working. Yeah, it's a good question. Um, you know, I feel like, I feel like it's in, it's, it's sort of, 50% all the things we were just talking about and 50% becoming a dad five years ago and um, uh, Sia who's my daughter when she was well, well basically as soon as she could walk she'd come into the studio and press everything <laughs> and um, and uh, and all, like all the really interesting stuff that you really don't want to mess with too much like I mean I've I've got this. Um, this this is her favourite thing to to mess with, which is the the circle and sequencer down here, which, like, once you've got it dialed and all the CVs tuned in and it all working, it's a beautiful, beautiful thing. But it's like just the nature of analog gear. It's pretty easy to screw it up. So Sia would come in. And she's like, "Oh, look at all these buttons. Look at all this," and it just became like it became apparent super super quick that there was just no point in fighting that. <laughs> Um, and so I just totally embraced it and, <laughs> you know, and you'd switch it, you'd, you'd, you'd press go the, you know, the next day and this bizarre thing would come out of it and you're like, oh, it's kind of neat. I'll do something with that. Um, and it, and it's, that's kind of a trite example, but I really, I do really think that, that that has had quite a big impact on stuff that I do, um, because you know, before I had kids, it was very easy to carve out like a six hour chunk in the studio where you're like, oh, I, yeah, I'm going to I'm going to really dial in on this. I'm going to do this. And like now that's just like a total impossible dream. <laughs> and and but like we were saying with with the, the thing of saying, oh, I don't want to work within a restricted brief and then finding out that actually working within a restricted brief is really positive for me anyway. Um, I'm now finding that, you know, I, I do I do love to be able to carve out a chunk of time in the studio, but at the same time, if I'm like right in the middle of this amazing creative flow and then some random thing happens, which usually is my daughter coming in and saying, I don't know, what, whatever, and then t you, you sort of have to completely take yourself out of that flow because there's something way more important for you to deal with in that moment. And you can either choose to be frustrated by that or just go, oh, well, that's an interesting little side avenue into what I thought was my process for this thing that I'm doing right now. And then you come back to it and you're like, oh, huh, well, that thing doesn't work. I need to change that. <laughs> yeah. And that thing, you, you might have spent three hours not noticing that that thing didn't work, you know? Um, and I, th um, so I'm trying to stay on track and remember what the question was. Well, it's just, it's just like, <laughs> chaos basically yeah, like embracing that yeah thing, and the fact thing. you can't control it i thought you were gonna say i like a i have like a, a random module in my uh in your modular but it sounds like you have the ultimate randomizer module walking around the, the house yeah yeah totally <laughs> totally and i i think it's really interesting um and i i'm 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 trying to i, I guess it kind of i guess it kind of comes down to like not trying not to take anything too seriously which isn't to, which is a which is a paradoxical thing right because the thing that you're creating you want to take absolutely seriously and you want to make everything as good as you, it can possibly be but at the same time within that process i think it's really easy to get hooked up on the minutiae of the, of, of the process of doing that and thinking that all of these little parts of it are super super important 
and for me as i get <laughs> as i get older and make more stuff it feels like those minutiae are less and less important um and actually I mean, you said something really interesting i i think it was on wednesday and you were talking about um um I've forgotten his name, but you were talking about a being stuff, and it's like if if you a b stuff twice and you quickly and you can't hear the difference, then there's no difference, and that that's basically it in a nutshell. I think it's like that is the kind of level of randomness and and the ability to embrace the chaos. Um, it's like okay, well yeah, if I sat here for two hours and I'm worried about the fifty hertz in that kick drum, then well yeah, this one's definitely got like 0.2 dB more, but like if i do this twice quickly and it still basically sounds like the track then that's still basically the track um and i thought that was super who who was it that said that uh it was actually a chad blake thing he's chad i think blake, it, i think it's something right. like he's, he used the word flip-flop which i love as well and for yeah, for yeah. people who don't know or who are a bit younger and have only worked on computers on in the center of a mixing console or desk depending on which part of the world you're from you would have these buttons like i'm listening to what's happening on the desk or i'm listening to um, an external input so you could have like a full mix of something or you could have two channels so you go boop 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 and it's like if you don't notice it straight away then doesn't matter yeah yeah it was and I thought such that was, a liberating I thought that was thought super important yeah and yeah. yeah and totally liberating and time saving right and, um, <laughs> yeah and like, it was like it's huge and when when i heard you say that i was like oh man that like that that single thing encapsulates so many of these things almost like bigger concepts that i like fret about mm -hmm. and i'm like oh yeah if you flip-flop twice, can't hear the difference, there's no difference. Great. <laughs>